Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Pioneer Natural Resources Company, ticker symbol PXD. Pioneer has had quite the year so far in 2022. Their stock price is up significantly, and currently they are paying out a very high dividend yield in addition to these returns of 8.3%. So with the increase in the price of oil and natural gas, Pioneer being a commodity business has been a major beneficiary. Currently, they are trading for $244.54 per share, and over the past year, they are up 28.5%. Going back five years, the company's stock price is up 11% compounded annually. Over 10 years, they're up at a rate of 9% compounded annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, the company's stock price has compounded at a rate of 11.5%, which when you add in their very high dividend yield, again, which is currently 8.3%, this business has delivered pretty phenomenal returns to shareholders over this time. So Pioneer is currently about $40 under their 52-week high. They're up significantly from their 52-week low. About 2.5% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short, and they are a large business. They have a $58 billion market cap. For more background about the company, headquartered in Irvine, Texas, Pioneer Natural Resources is an independent oil and gas exploration and production company focusing on the Permian Basin in Texas. At year-end 2021, Pioneer's proven reserves were 2.2 billion barrels of oil equivalent, with net production for the year of 612 million barrels of oil equivalent per day. Oil and natural gas liquids represented 68% of Pioneer's production. Pioneer Natural Resources Company was founded in 1997 and is headquartered in Irvine, Texas. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Pioneer Natural Resources based on their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress. It's going to continue to evolve and improve over time. By no means am I an expert on oil and gas exploration and production companies, but by applying the Select 6 analysis framework, it provides a great opportunity to learn in public. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. This is important because the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital, and over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. So Pioneer's return on capital has fluctuated pretty significantly over this time, being a commodity business, this is not necessarily surprising. They finished out last year earning about 13% return on capital. And so far over their last 12 months, they've actually earned 27% return on capital. However, averaged out over this time frame, they're only earning a little under 8% return on capital. So while that's just very slightly above average, that's pretty well below that 14% mark we were looking for. So this is going to be an X to start off here on metric number one. Metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the cash coming into the business. We want their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows to have grown over the past five years. Over this time, Pioneer has more than tripled their revenues. Their earnings are up more than two and a half times. And despite the inconsistencies with their return on capital, over the last three years, they've managed positive free cash flows. And over this time period, overall, they've gone from producing negative cash flows to now they are quite positive. Last year they produced about $3 billion of cash flow. So all three of these are up and this is gonna be our first check here on metric number two. Next up for metric number three, we're gonna be building off the previous metric and taking a look at Pioneer on a per share basis. So looking at the company here from the perspective of an individual shareholder in the company, we want their earnings per share to have grown over the last five years. So in the previous metric, we saw that their earnings had grown nearly two and a half times over this time frame. However, we're not seeing the same growth in their earnings per share. And this is because over this period, the company has diluted existing shareholders by 50%. So that is very high shareholder dilution here. Thankfully, they've been able to grow their earnings faster than they've diluted shareholders, but that's a significant amount of dilution. And so if you're interested in this business, that would be an area you'd ideally want to learn more about. They could have issued these shares for a number of reasons, including potentially for acquisitions or to increase their liquidity. This, again, is something that you really would want to understand in more depth if you're interested here in this business. So we don't like to see shareholder dilution because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in this underlying business. So when a company issues new shares and dilutes existing shareholders, they're decreasing your ownership percentage in the business, which is ultimately going to decrease the percentage of the business's profits that you're going to be entitled to. 
While their profits are up overall during this time frame, if you've been a long-term shareholder in the company, your percentage of the business's profits have gone down by 50% here. So even with that high dilution, they've still managed to grow their earnings per share. And this is another check here on metric number three. Metric number four, very similar here. We're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Again, they had negative free cash flows per share in 2017 and 2018, but since 2019, things have been positive. Over their last 12 months, things have been extremely positive for the business. They're producing about $25 of free cash flow per share during this time. And so this is another check here on metric number four. So far through our first four metrics, we are three for four. Next up for metric number five, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced in each of these five financial years. This is going to help us get a better sense of the leverage that Pioneer is employing in their business. We don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's highly levered businesses that are at the greatest risk of having bad outcomes. So at the end of last year, Pioneer had $3.8 billion of net debt. They paid down this debt over the last 12 months, and currently they have a net debt position of $2.8 billion. So when we add up all of the free cash flow that they've generated over this time, even with these negative years, they're producing about $3 billion of free cash flow. And so based off of their abilities to produce free cash flows, it does look like the business is using a reasonable amount of debt here, and it doesn't look like Pioneer is overly levered. So this is going to be a check on metric number five. It's also worth pointing out that over their last 12 months, Pioneer has produced $6.2 billion of free cash flow. So they'd be able to pay off all of their net debt if they continue their last 12 months of free cash flow, which is six months of the business's operations. So Pioneer is currently generating a ton of free cash flow in their business. And so far through five metrics, we have four checks and only one X. For our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield above 5%. If this is the case, this will give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate of the 10-year treasury and give us a reason to potentially be interested in the company. We're using total enterprise value here because it is gonna be a more realistic economic picture of the company than their market cap is alone. Currently, Pioneer has a total enterprise value of $61 billion. Using their enterprise value is gonna be more similar to as if Pioneer were a private business. So we learned that in the past five years, Pioneer has produced $3 billion of free cash flow, which means that in an average year, they're producing about $600 million of free cash flow. So when we divide their $600 million of average free cash flow by their $61 billion total enterprise value, that only gives us an average free cash flow to enterprise value yield of a little under 1%. This is gonna be an X here as 1% is under where the yield of the 10 year treasury is at currently and it's well below that 5% mark we're looking for. Again, worth noting about the business, they produce $6.2 billion of free cash flow over their last 12 months. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the company, when we divide their $6.2 billion of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $61 billion total enterprise value, that gives us a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield of more than 10% on this business. So we have two different extremes going on here where they had pretty low average free cash flows, but their current free cash flows are very high compared to where they've been historically. So because of that, even though this is an X here on metric number six, it's probably still worth your while to at least look into the business further and try to determine for yourself whether it's in your wheelhouse to be able to understand this company or not. Then here we're looking at Pioneer's dividend profile. Pioneer, as mentioned, is paying out an 8.3% dividend yield, and they've steadily increased their dividends per share in all five of these years. Over the last 12 months, they brought in about $25 of cash flow per share, and they paid out nearly $16 in dividends per share. They've been paying out the majority of the cash flows they're bringing in as dividends. However, it is somewhat concerning that they were paying out dividends in 2017 and 2018, even when the business was earning negative free cash flows. So again, depending on further research into the business, that is potentially that is potentially a suboptimal way of allocating capital here. It's worth being aware that people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividend yields. So if you're interested in a company for its potential to pay out high amounts of dividends, it would serve you well to look at the fundamentals that underlie the business and to see for yourself whether the business's dividends are well supported by that company's abilities to produce cash flows. Over their last two years and over their last 12 months, it looks like Pioneer has been able to do that. However, prior to that, this wasn't the case. Ultimately, to get a better understanding of where Pioneer's dividend could potentially go in the future, 
you're just going to need to do more research into the business and understand how management is approaching capital allocation. Then finally, here we're using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for Pioneer. Like any other model, a discounted cash flow model is going to depend on the assumptions that you're using for the model. So these are going to be based off their historical abilities to grow their free cash flows throughout their history. And you need to confirm or disconfirm for yourself whether these assumptions used here are going to be truly applicable for the business going forward. This is really just useful to help give us a baseline estimate for where Pioneer could potentially be at in the future. Because of their extremely high cash flows currently that are well above where they've been historically, we'll use a starting point of an average of their free cash flows per share, so a little under $10 per share here over the past three years. Then if we project a growth stage out over the next 10 years, based on their historical abilities to grow their free cash flows at a rate of 3.7% annually, and then use a terminal growth stage where that growth falls off. So projecting all the way out 20 years into the future where the company is only gonna grow at a rate of 2% annually. If we're adding in today's tangible book value for Pioneer, if we're looking for a 10% rate of return over the next 20 years for the company, including their dividends, a fair value for the business looks like it would be only $208 per share. So that's down more than $36 from where the company's share price is currently. Using those same assumptions, which you need to check for yourself, from today's stock price, it looks like you could reasonably expect about a 6% rate of return going forward from Pioneer. This would be including their dividend payouts. So based off of their 8.3% dividend yield currently, it does not look like the business's stock price would be doing much over this time. But if they kept up those dividend payouts, you could potentially expect a return of about 6% between their dividends and their stock price. So keep in mind that this is not financial advice. This is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals. So in summary, Pioneer Natural Resources checks the box on four out of six of our metrics. They're currently earning just very slightly above average returns on capital at around 8%. However, that's below that 14% mark we're typically looking for. Over the last five years, they've managed to grow their revenues, earnings, and their free cash flows. However, they have diluted existing shareholders by more than 50% during this time. Even with that pretty high dilution, the business has still managed to grow their per share metrics. So coupling their per share metric growth with their high returns on capital, especially over their last 12 months, is actually a pretty good sign for the company here. Then the business has been pretty focused on paying down a lot of their debt. They've significantly improved their balance sheet over the past couple of years, and it looks like their free cash flows are able to comfortably support the amount of leverage that the company is using. Then because they are a commodity business and they're exposed to commodity pricing cycles, meaning that this company is potentially volatile with the booms and busts in the oil and gas industry. In part because of that, their average free cash flow at an enterprise value yield is pretty low at only about 1%. However, writing on the back of some increased commodity pricing recently, the company has been producing a ton of free cash flow and their current free cash flow to enterprise value yield is above 10%, which potentially still makes this business an attractive opportunity to look at. Then looking at their dividend profile, that was somewhat of a mixed bag as it looks like there are some potential questionable capital allocation decisions there when the business was paying out a bunch of dividends in years that it did not have the cash flow to support those dividends and it looked like the business was taking on additional debt at that time. And finally, using a discounted cash flow model based off of their historical abilities to grow their free cash flow since the late 90s. If those assumptions are gonna be applicable for the business going forward into the future, which is something that you need to do more homework on and research in more depth, then it looks like the company is moderately overpriced right now if you wanted a 10% rate of return going forward over the next 20 years. A fair value, a potential fair value for the company at that rate of return would be about $208 per share which the company was actually trading for as recently as late September. So again, this analysis is not financial advice. It is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Instead, it serves as a beginning and holistic understanding of Pioneer Natural Resources to help you learn for yourself whether it's worth your while to dig in, do more homework, and learn more about the company in more depth. If you're interested in learning more about Pioneer, I would recommend starting with their corporate filings. You can read through their historical 10Ks to get a history of the business and their operating results. Management will also lay out some of the potential risks that the company faces and will give some insight into the overall environment that the company operates in and their plans for strategic decision making going forward. From that, you'll also be able to understand both the character and the competence of management, 
when it comes to key points such as capital allocation strategies. So as a value investor, you're ultimately wanting to conduct your research as if you're going to own 100% of the business and you can truly understand all of the ins and outs of a company and get to know what's important and what's not important for the business through deeper research into the company. During your research, you'll be able to learn more about the quantitative and the qualitative aspects of the company and be able to determine for yourself what you think an appropriate intrinsic value for the business is. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Pioneer Natural Resources Company, ticker symbol PXD. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Pioneer Natural Resources with me, and have a great day.